four discus, four shot comparisons from around the world. Check it out. everybody, it's Coach Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. Today's video, we are going to break down our videos. This is our weekly submissions. We're getting way too many videos to co obviously cover. So some of the people I picked today actually submitted last week, so I selected them. Again, shoot the right camera angle for our gliders, really get that side angle for our discus throwers. This tends to be a good angle because you can see a lot of things. Side angle, you can see a lot of good things as well. But for the sake of comparison, this is it. Try to shoot your videos um turn your camera horizontally right and we're probably going to be requesting you guys send these videos via email because the compression on the dm kind of makes the video sometimes a little grainy all right guys so today is all about we're going to do kind of comparison we got throwers from around the world again everybody's trying to develop that perfect throwing technique whether that's your discus rotational shot or your glide we're going to have some stuff in the future the javelin the hammer so stay tuned for that but we're going to do a little comparison this time kind of run through our six pillars and see what people do throughout the throw now real quick before i dive in one of the key things i want to make sure of is everybody at this time of the year that's submitting video is clearly dedicated and and driven great job to you guys for you guys that do have coaches again what we want to do here is I'm just gonna give you things that we see kind of compare maybe you've already worked on these things maybe it's just a fresh perspective but the idea is we want to respect the fact that some of you guys that have coaches we're just giving you what we see are the good things and things that are kind of standing out to us all right so first up we have Jacko uh, Jackson Meller from Australia and I have Aaron uh, from India and we synced up these guys at their throw so the first thing we want to look at is their their pillar ones are pretty good so they're you know where they start and wind up how they move but right here's where we're starting to see this I have so what I like is Jackson here does a nice job of staying pretty long Aaron gets a little bit of a squat on the legs that's not necessarily a bad thing so as he comes around he's gonna kind of cut his sweep a little short and the left arm kind of comes around I'm going to see Jackson here kind of takes a nicer, longer path with that left arm, but we, we're under-rotating this left foot, and that's going to cause, even though he's getting a sprint, he's a younger athlete using lighter weight implement, and then when you get to the heavier implement, it's really more difficult to get away with those things. So as we go through and we get our sweep, both guys do a pretty good job. So now as we create this sweep, you're going to see that um, Aaron's left arm kind of comes around a little bit. Sweep position and sprint position is pretty good. Now here's what he does well. I like the way he pulls this knee. He's pulling it in behind so he's going to accelerate rotation and it's going to help him get this foot down and it's going to help him stay on the ball of the foot. Whereas you see with Jackson right here, this is the key. He is kind of backing in. You see that right there? That's really key. He kind of backs in so you see the, the right side turning more than the left and you need the hips and both knees and everything turning as a unit. So what that does is that causes Jackson to create a little bit of a shift, whereas you're gonna see Aaron's gonna stay up on the ball, the foot a little bit better. Both guys are shifting and you're gonna see how, again, they're forward, so they're not gonna be working around as well as they could. So with Jackson, he's gonna need to be working on getting around his block. He's doing a nice job of setting the block. So is Aaron, but Aaron does a nicer job of blocking the left shoulder. So that's gonna get him out and around a bit, but he's gonna come off. He has a little bit of a shift as well. You see that right there, we'll go back. There's your pillar five. You see how the knee's not pushing ahead and then out and around. And you really see that over here with Jackson that when he came in, because he had that back in, that foot goes flat, he reaches and he shifts, and then he pulls this left shoulder back. So that is gonna cause a problem. So where does this all begin? Again, when we look at our throw and the way what we teach with the throwing chain reaction, we're looking at, we just broke it down from pillar two through six. Um, you can see that as we go back through here, the entry, it's that pillar two, three is gonna be the big focus here, and then the transition, right? So he's gonna have to learn this. This is kind of looks like the squeezing of the knees. We always suggest you squeeze the the knee behind that's gonna make a bigger difference okay so let's check out the next video all right so now we have Hattie and Jacob again one of the things we're gonna look at now uh, Hattie has been to um, some Arite camps down in Australia and he had 
convert it over to the spin. Now, here's the thing we're gonna look at, and then we have Jacob. Jacob's from Germany. He's trying to convert to the spin, and we're gonna co cover a couple of key things. First off, what we're gonna look at again, we always look at the start pillar one, and that's kinda how we're setting up our throw, and so you're gonna notice how we have Hattie moving kind of from this position, so he's gonna take it long. Now, he has a little bit of a bend at the arm, and that doesn't seem like much, but we wanna rotate and wind that left side. And then here you're gonna look at Jacob, he's got the arm straight. So this is gonna affect how the shoulder enters into the ring. So with Hattie, you're gonna see this here. We're gonna go as he turns, he's gotta have that left arm uh, opening a little bit more and the foot. He's also on the outside of the foot. And you're gonna notice here, Jacob, he's got that arm folded across. So he's gonna go down, he comes up, he goes down, then he comes up and then he opens up that arm. So he's opening the arm late. So he's got too much of this kind of up down motion. That's what we would recommend. We recommend a more twisting tension creating wind. So you come around a little taller. Uh, you don't have to be super tall, but you wanna come around and drop. You're gonna see the difference here where Hattie comes in. So his pillar two to three, he comes in here. He's under rotated on the left. And you're gonna see Jacob gets this around. Pretty nice position here. He winds up, kind of reminds me of kind of what Jacko Gill used to do, but Jacko Gill had a very different left arm path and you didn't see that big up down motion. Um, so now as he comes here, he rewraps. So we're gonna see our pillar three is our sweep. This should still be out and opening in our opinion, should open up to about three o'clock. And so this way it's gonna create this type of a motion in his throw. Hattie's kind of come across, he's opening the arm kind of like one of the things we've taught him to focus on, but he under rotates here. So he kind of is gonna get more of that motion. And so that transition, what we call is our pillar four into the middle. He's gonna be wrapping around here pretty well. You notice the knee kind of moving behind, which is gonna create that nice rotation. And he's got a pretty good motion here and he gets pretty good lift and pretty good extension. But we wanna clean up the start a little bit. Whereas we have here with Jacob, you're gonna see that as he comes around, he's re-wrapping too much. Does that help him create speed? Yes, it does. But he's kind of bending over. That's gonna cause his hips to shift into the direction of the throw just a little bit. He gets a nice side rotation and a good block, but you're gonna notice on the delivery side, he's kinda got that, uh, looks to me like the elbow's dropping a little bit, but really his big problems, again, kinda come at this point here. He's got the upper body too open, and again, that up-down action is going to create the wrong type of rhythm. So at this point, looking at the two, you can see similar again, where, where we have issues that back here in the start, this affects the chain reaction, and this is what is going to help both of these guys clean up and add a lot more distance real fast. If you guys would like more information at this time, this is the off season. We're going to be gearing up for 2020. If you guys would like to know more about how to put together your programs, learn your technique and all that, check out the Throwing Chain Reaction System. Link is in the description. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share this bad boy, and thanks so much and we'll see you on the next video.